As ISIS continues its reign of terror across Iraq and Syria, the US and its allies are scrambling to find ways to contain the jihadist group. With me to discuss this is Haider al Koei from Chatham House. Haider, what at the moment are the US and others doing to try and contain ISIS? I think the intervention by the United States uh, and the United Kingdom, Kingdom so far has been effective in preventing an act of genocide taking place in Mount Sinjar, where tens of thousands of uh, Yazidis were stranded uh, at risk of being slaughtered by ISIS or dying of thirst. Uh, and the limited airstrikes was also effective in preventing the ISIS onslaught towards Erbil, which is the capital of the Kurdish uh, regional government. Right. Uh, now, how important is Erbil and, and indeed the Kurdish government to the US strategy of containment? I think the United States made it very clear that the main reason they were intervening was to protect US personnel in Erbil because Erbil is home uh, to US uh, consulate. What the limited airstrikes is not going to do, unfortunately, is turn the tide against ISIS. It will not shift the balance of power. For that to happen, there needs to be much more uh, military engagement from the United States and other allies uh, to push back against ISIS. Uh, the airstrikes are effective when ISIS is out in the open and moving towards the city, they can be easily spotted uh, and eliminated, but it's not going to turn the tide, unfortunately. Right. So getting rid of ISIS from urban centres like Mosul or Raqqa in Syria, where their, their real concentration of power is, is going to be something that can't be done from the air? Yeah, it's going to be very difficult, and this is why uh, both the federal government in Baghdad and the regional government in Erbil is calling for the United States to provide more help. Uh, the United States, whether we like it or not, helped create the environment which gave birth to ISIS in both Iraq and, and in Syria. Uh, and I think their reluctance uh, to help Iraq push back and fight against ISIS is an outrage. They're not calling for boots on the ground. They just want more intelligence, more military equipment, more uh, airstrikes against the ISIS, uh, and just to provide them with the assistance uh, that they need to fight. The, the sense in Baghdad and Erbil is, is that if the United States doesn't have the stomach uh, for military engagement, the least they can do is help them take the fight to ISIS. It's a bit of a difficult choice though, isn't it? Because obviously one of the reasons why ISIS has become so powerful is because it has captured so much equipment from the Iraqi security forces, lots of equipment that was provided by the US and, and NATO allies before they withdrew. So what I suppose needs to happen uh, to convince the US to do more, to provide more military equipment to the central government in Baghdad? What's clear is that Iraqis, uh, whether that's the Kurds or the central government in Baghdad, needs to move forward on the political front. Many analysts rightly point out that there can be no military solution without a political solution. The only thing I would add is that there can be no political solution without a military solution. Uh, and they are begging for help. And, and ISIS, if not stopped now, will only further consolidate and expand their territories. And this, by the way, isn't going to be just a problem for Iraq or indeed the Middle East. ISIS, if it can establish a state in the heart of the Middle East, is going to be a threat to everybody, everyone in Europe, the United States itself. There are many sympathizers of ISIS living in Western democracies, and they are not going to keep quiet. Yes, I suppose recently, this week, we've seen actually examples of ISIS supporters, even in Oxford Street in London. Just going back to the, the questions in Iraq, what are the problems with the US in arming the Kurds? Uh, obviously the PKK is a designated terrorist organization. The Turks, who are going to be central to any solution to, to containing ISIS, uh, have their own issues with the PKK and the Kurdish separatist movement. It seems that this is fraught with difficulty. I think it's worth bearing in mind now that Kurdistan shares uh, over 1,000 kilometers of border with ISIS territory. Uh, and the Peshmerga, they are the re uh, uh, Kurdish regional guard, they are going to need assistance as well uh, in pushing back against ISIS. What the recent uh, and unprecedented action by the West in arming the Kurds has done uh, is just further increase their chances, maybe not now, but in the next five to ten years, of being an independent state. It is recognition that the Kurds are separate from Iraq. A long and protracted struggle. Thank you, Haydn. Thank you.